In his key speeches, Obama often declines to identify his opponents and rarely mentions them by name. They said this day would never come, he says in one of his victory speeches. But who are they? He is referring to the cynics, the politicians who exploit and manipulate differences in society without actually naming them. Obama deliberately keeps his references to his opponents vague. In this way, he avoids us versus them distinctions and the idea that there is always a clear bad guy. There is a deep racial divide in America. The African Americans suffered a long period of legalized discrimination. And they are still dealing with its reper repercussions. Does this mean that white America is the bad guy? In fact, a similar anger exists within segments of the white community. Most working and middle class white Americans don't feel that they've been particularly privileged by their race. Their experience is the immigrant experience. As far as they're concerned, no one handed them anything. They built it from scratch. What about religion? It turns out that America's greatest historical figures were inspired by their faith. Any attempt to draw a clear distinction between secularists and religious people greatly oversimplifies the issue. Frederick Douglass, Abraham Lincoln, Williams Jennings Bryant, Dorothy Day, Martin Luther King, the majority of the great reformers in American history were not only motivated by faith, but they repeatedly used religious language to argue for their cause. On the subject of Africa, Obama has taken a similar approach. The West has often approached Africa as a patron or a source of resources rather than a partner. But the West is not responsible for the destruction of the Zimbabwean economy over the last decade. Or wars in which children are enlisted as combatants. What is the effect of this frame? For every situation involving a conflict, Obama points out that there are victims on both sides and that there is no clear bad guy. This is known as speaking inclusively. Nobody is excluded. According to this frame, a conflict should not be blamed on one side. Instead, it's an unfortunate or even tragic situation that all sides should seek to resolve together. Every culture has its values and its history, which are often wrought with emotion. Obama always tries to link his positions to these values, histories and emotions. And in my country, African Americans, including so many recent immigrants, have thrived in every sector of society. We've done so despite a difficult past. And we've drawn strength from our African heritage. Scripture tells us that we shall not oppress a stranger, for we know the heart of a stranger. We were strangers once, too. My fellow Americans, we are and always will be a nation of immigrants. We were strangers once, too. And whether our forebears were strangers who crossed the Atlantic, or the Pacific, or the Rio Grande, we are here only because this country welcomed them in and taught them that to be an American is about something more than what we look like, or what our last names are, or how we worship.